It comes as no surprise to me that Dr. Winger is the recipient of this evening's award. She truly is the grand dame of American cardiology. When Dr. Bob Taylor, the chief of cardiology, asked me to take this position as chief of cardiology as Dr. Winger was stepping down, he remarked that I had very large shoes to fill, but he wasn't so sure how good I looked in high heels. In academic medicine, we talk about the three pillars of education, scholarship, and patient care. And Dr. Winger really embodies all three of those in an amazing extent. Her publications are endless. Her CV is a published volume. She's been the guiding light to countless generations of young physicians, and her patient care at the bedside is something that we all strive to emulate. And I can think of no one else at Grady more worthy of this award than she. In 1958, Atlanta teetered on the edge of resurgence and change. It was also when Nanette Wenger and her new fiancé moved from New York to Atlanta. It remained to be seen if they were ready for the South, or if the South was ready for Nanette Wenger. She had her doubts, but decided to give it a chance, at least for a while. Dr. Wenger and her colleagues were a group of like-minded Yankee transplants stitched together by a passion to serve. Grady was their citadel against intolerance and bias. Out there was separate but equal. In here was inclusion and shared knowledge. What she experienced in 1958 was two hospitals in one, a symbol and a symptom of the times. But change was in the air. Changes that 28-year-old Nanette Wenger, the new senior resident of medicine at Emory University, had no small part in creating. She would establish informal gatherings, giving female colleagues and friends an opportunity to network and to share opinions and information. She published the first of over a thousand articles and papers about the differences in cardiac care for women. Mentors emerged and she became their understudy. In time, she took center stage, quietly. Yes, people are the same, she said, but each patient is different. In order to treat them effectively, you had to apply multiple disciplines, medical, economic, ethical, and even spiritual. She employed holistic methods before they were in vogue. She cared about her patients as she cared for them. She asked about their families, their fears, and their concerns about their health. She gained their trust and respect. They called her Sweetie and Hun and Lady Doc and shared in their own well-being. Home beckoned. Prestigious positions were offered. She could write her own ticket, but chose instead to stay and press for changes in the treatment of women's heart health. She espoused empathy to see the world through those different than us, to understand that people are the same, but each of us is different with individual needs as varied as men and women, or young and old. Today, Dr. Wenger carries her crusade for women's health care with an expanded message that includes our ever-growing senior population. She remains in demand internationally as an expert, a mentor, and yes, even a sage. And true to her word, she gave us a chance for 50 plus years. Why does she stay? At Grady, she shares a commitment to serve a diverse population, regardless of class, creed, or color. But there's more to it. Out there, you can build a career. In here, you can change the world.